Thanks everybody for being with us tonight. Uh, thanks for your patience. A uh, little unique challenges, obviously trying to get around and navigate with our first home game here for post practice avail or post game availability. So thanks a lot. Appreciate everybody. Um, first of all, you know, my good friend, Mike Loxley and, and his staff are great men and great coaches and they're going to rebuild a program. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that that will get done. He's a, a terrific leader in our profession and uh, a great friend of mine. We worked together back when I was at Maryland and like I said, early in the week, I'll be rooting for the Terps every week, except for this one. Um, I'm a huge fan of locks and know a lot of guys on the staff and wish them the best of luck as, as we move forward. I thought our guys prepared incredibly well. You know, it's been a long road to get here to game night. And, um, you know, the, the job that our, our medical team did and Jeff Bianas and Kevin Kikagawa and their staffs, uh, Northwestern Medicine, uh, NU uh, Health Services, and uh, all of our first uh, care providers, our health providers, we wouldn't be able to be here without them. And, and uh, a lot of folks in the athletic department, there are too many to list that, uh, you know, we started uh, down a road to try to get to tonight. And uh, it was just a, a great time to be back in the arena and, and back out leading a great group of young men. Really proud of the overall team performance. I think it's a, an indication of the preparation getting ready for tonight. We, uh, we kind of changed some things up a little bit with our routine here the last 24 hours. I thought the guys handled that well. We had prepared for it. Uh, and then we went into a two week uh, game prep last week. And, and I thought uh, our guys were really focused on what we needed to get done and how we needed to do things. So really proud of the overall performance, a lot of great individual performances, but pretty darn clean in all three phases. So um, appreciate everybody being with us tonight. And I'll answer any and all your questions. Thanks a lot. First question, Andrew Seligman. Sorry, Andrew, you're muted, buddy. I can't hear you. Let's see if we can get that fixed for him. What do you, what do you think of Ramsey's performance? Yeah, Andrew, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for being here. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. You know, I thought he played really clean. I thought he made really good decisions with the ball. I thought he looked um, very poised. You know, for a young man that's been in our program now for months, you know, even though he's got years of experience in the Big Ten, you know, to see that uh, his, his teammates elected him a captain, I think, speaks to his leadership and speaks to who he is. So really proud of his performance today. I thought uh, the way he spread the ball around was outstanding and a great game called by Mike Bajakin. You know, I thought uh, the last couple of weeks we've kind of honed in to get ready for tonight, uh, even as uh, late as this afternoon, <laughs> looking at some different things from a play call sheet. So uh, it was a great first week. And, and now, you know, as you move forward each week, it just gets harder and harder in Big Ten play. And you know, nothing will be harder than next week for us on the road. So um, just really proud of, of Peyton and, and obviously Jake did a great job too. Thanks. Next question, Ella Brockway. Hi coach, um, starting off with that first half, how did coming out at such a high tempo help you guys? And I guess like coming out at such a fast pace and being able to score that early in those quick drives. Yeah, hello. Good evening. Uh, you know, I think the, there was um, a, a great response. I think that first third down conversion was really important in the game. You know, they they had uh, they had some good plays in their first drive offensively, uh, and some things we uh, we we you know some we talked about, we prepared for, and other things we didn't. So good job by the Terps. Uh, but you know, I thought our our offense then being able to sustain a drive the way they did, uh, you know, uh, allowed us I think to get a lot of confidence. As a team, you know, it's it's a new offense, it's a new quarterback, and to get that first drive was great. And then, you know, obviously being opportunistic as a defense and, and putting pretty much points on the board every time we got a turnover was key. Next question, Drew Shot. Hey, Coach. Um, I want to ask you about the secondary. Obviously, that's a unit that with Greg not playing tonight and Travis opting out, that's kind of had some questions. And obviously tonight played incredibly well, three interceptions. Rod and Brandon led the team in tackles tonight. How do you feel about that unit, not only tonight, but going forward as you had contributions from your young guys as well as your established players? Like yeah, yeah, Drew, a lot of young guys played tonight. You guys were probably looking down on your sheet saying, who's this guy? Who's that guy? It's uh, a great job by our young men being prepared. And, um, you know, we'll get guys back hopefully sooner than later. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, uh, yeah, I was really proud of the way that uh, the entire the entire secondary stepped up. They've got great leadership. I mean, GR, again, JR was elected a captain for a reason. And, uh, you know, he's done a great job leading that group and and a lot of plays being made all over the field today. Really, really fun to watch. 
Next question, Andrew Golden. Hey, Coach. Um, my, my question for you is, um, obviously, this is your 100th win uh, with the program. What is it like to kind of reach that accomplishment uh, at, your own, at your alma mater? Hey, Andrew. Good evening, buddy. Um, well, it's, it's, it's an honor. It's humbling. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's about our players. It's about our staff. It's about our players' families. It's about our staff's families. You know, so many people have contributed to this. And, you know, I, I, I printed out a list. Hopefully, that was going to happen last year. It didn't. But I, I'm just... I'm just looking at our captains, right? I'm looking at two pages of captains and to see what they're doing for a living now, like fetch public relations and, you know, one's in the army and I'm not going to tell you his branch, but he's, he's a special guy and Boston scientific and Dexa fit and GRNE solutions and guys in the NFL and coaching at Yale, you know, corporate partnership guy at the uh, executive with the Falcons, Kirkland and Ellis lawyer. I mean, Chubb insurance. I'm just, these are just the highlighted guys, you know, uh, River on AXIA Consulting with the Vikings, NFL with the Colts, Cleveland Navy Business Management Associate, you know, Clayton with the court, you know, playing, Justin playing, Tyler playing. Um, it, it's, uh, it's awesome. I mean, it's Montre playing. I mean, it's about the players. It's about their families. And uh, I'm just so proud of those guys and I'm honored to be their coach. And to all those that played here, I'm sorry it took so long to get to 100 and to our fans. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, but hopefully the next 100 will go a lot faster. Uh, next question, Peter Warren. Hey, Fitz. John Rain had, you know, as many more receiving yards today than the super back group last year had the entire season. What was it like to have such a great performance from the, the, new, the new tight end position? Yeah, well, we changed the name for a reason, buddy. You know, so, uh, no, I mean, the super back was great to us. <laughs> Uh, it was a great position to put a bunch of guys in the NFL. Um, we try to keep John really quiet. Uh, you guys obviously reported, everybody reported on him a little bit. Probably got to coach the guys up to be a little bit more coy. But uh, John's a really good player, really, really good player. And he's an unbelievable teammate. You know, those, you know, he and Peyton to come in and make an impact like they, like they have, uh, you know, I think speaks not only to their skill set, uh, but I think it also speaks to the team welcoming those guys with open arms. I thought Charlie Mangieri played really well tonight too. I mean, for us to be able to run the ball, both of our tight ends, and then we have depth there for those guys to play the way they did. But it starts up front, and I thought the offensive line was outstanding. Uh, you know, Nick Urban's our captain up there, elected for this week. But the veteran guys of him and and um, and Ethan and Gunner, uh, you know, and Sammy, uh, you know, those guys are veterans. And then to get Peter out there for his first experience – uh, it was a great one. So uh, really, really dominant performance by our offensive line. Really proud of those guys. Time for a few more questions. Uh, next one, again, from Drew Schott. Hey, Coach. Obviously, Isaiah Bowser, Drake Anderson, Evan Hall, great night from your running back room. Um, last year, I know there were some injuries that kind of forced some rotation in that room and some other guys to step up. Now that you have kind of three proven backs have shown they can make plays kind of uh, what are your feelings about the running backs and kind of what is your plan for them going down the road? I'm going to knock on wood. we got to keep them healthy, right? I mean, that, that was the bugaboo a year ago. And, um, you know, I, I thought those guys played outstanding tonight. It was, it was great to get IB back. I think Drake just shows his explosiveness. Same thing with Evan, um, you know, and then Cam got in the action there a little bit too. And uh, I think we got the Cisco kid going a little bit late night too. So, I don't know if you guys were up for that or already eating nachos, but uh, it was great to to see all those guys get going and and uh, just really proud of the job that they've done. Uh, not surprised, Lou Ianni is one of the best coaches in the country, and um, you know he's destined to be a head coach. And to see the way his guys perform week in and week out, it's it's about all those guys. So they've got a great camaraderie in that room. Two more questions. Uh, next one, Eli Carp. Hey, Coach, uh, last week you talked about, you know, learning about Mike Jakin's tendencies during, um, you know, during the game. What did you learn about his play calling tendencies today? Well, first of all, I thought, you know, just the whole week and in, in the way that he approached things, Eli, was, you know, you could tell he's a veteran. He's been through a lot of, a lot of games. Um, you know, he had a very, I, I think, sound mindset on what he wanted to do offensively with our weapons, you heard him talk about that. You know, he, his philosophy is to get the ball into our playmakers' hands in advantageous uh, uh, matchups. And, uh, you know, to see the way that he did that tonight, 
very calm on the headphones. Great, great conversation from a dialogue standpoint with the entire offensive staff. Uh, you would have thought that this was their 50th, 70th, 100th game together. I mean, they've had, uh, I, again, I think they've meshed and molded really well. It's a credit to Dennis Springer uh, and Lou Ienni and Bob Hefner and Kurt Anderson uh, to come in with Jake as Jake comes in and, and, and puts his offense in for all those guys to come together and embrace it and create solutions for our players. So, um, you know, great first one, uh, but a lot of work to do and, and, and great opponents ahead of us. And we've got, a, we've got a lot of work to do to keep getting better. Last question here uh, for Daniel Olinger. Hey, Coach. I know you were already asked about the secondary and how they played. I just wanted to ask in particular about Brandon Joseph because it was big news, like in the last week, the opt-out of Travis Woolick and the, how he was going to have to yeah. step in and replace for him. How do you think he played tonight, and what did he do well? Yeah, Daniel. I mean, you know, and I don't know if I was clear enough on this before, but you know, we we knew about our guys that were opting out before we started summer workouts. So. I shouldn't say summer workouts, uh, preseason, whatever you may be. So, you know, as I, as I said before, we fully support those guys. We lift them up in, in our performance. I hope they were watching tonight and and uh, sang the fight song post game because uh, we love them dearly and we're here for them. Uh, but you know, Brandon's a great player. He's a great athlete. Um, you know, he's a young man that we thought could have an opportunity to be an instant impact player. And uh, you know, I thought his performance tonight you know, demonstrated that along with, you know, obviously the depth of the entire entire secondary. So it'll be tested as we move forward. There's no question, but a really good first step and really proud of those guys. And I know this was the last question, but I don't know if he's watching, but, uh, to, or, you know, great Wildcat, Teddy Greenstein. Uh, you know, I know he's he's moved on to, to different uh, opportunities and different challenges and has uh, covered our program for a long time. Uh, I'll go back to even when I was a student athlete, uh, he was covering our program. So uh, just appreciate Teddy G, his family and, and his dedication to cover Northwestern football and Northwestern athletics. And, uh, you know, now I can talk to him more, more personally uh, and he can wear more purple because he had to be, uh, you know, not biased in the past, but uh, I think those days are over. I think he falls into the purple, purple mafia now, like, like uh, green, greeny and all everybody else. So just appreciate Teddy and wish him the best of luck with he and his family. But thanks for staying up late with us. Obviously a huge challenge next week on the road and we'll see you all on Monday. All right. Thanks a lot. Go cats. All right, um, that was quick. Uh, thanks everyone for the brief hold. Um, we have Isaiah Bowser and Payne Ramsey. Uh, please be sure to direct your question to either one of them, or if it's for both, please specify. And again, we'll go right into questions. If you can uh, message Athletic Communications before you ask, that would be great. Thank you. First question, Peter Warren. Uh, as Peyton and Isaiah both can answer this. What's it just like to be back, you know, on a football field playing and playing a game this year? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was fun. That's what it was. Um, and it felt like a long time coming, but, um, you know, probably a little nerves, anxiety, a lot of different emotions. But once we got back, you know, that first drive and, and kind of started rolling, um, I think more than anything, we just had fun. And that's what it's that's what it's all about. Yeah, it was a great time being out there again, um, and especially after the little holdout we had, uh, not knowing if we are going to play. Um, 
we had a fun time out there. Um, everybody did a great job, put up a lot of points, and ready to play again next week, do the same thing. Uh, next question, Paul Banks. Guys, this is uh, for both of you. Uh, new starting quarterback, new starting tailback, new offensive coordinator. I mean, does this feel like this the biggest no look offense? Like in terms of like one season of turnaround, I must feel like there's a lot of turnover. Yeah, there's a lot of guys who have played a lot of football um, around us, and I think that um, as a new quarterback, and, and I don't want to speak for Coach Jake, but as a new offensive coordinator coming in and having that cont continuity already. Um, having older guys that have played, um, that helps us all the more. Um, and having those leaders in the room, um, you know, thinking specifically, you know, those older guys in the receiver room, super, super experienced. And um, I think that's made, you know, that's made a huge difference for us. Yeah, just like Peyton said, um, you know, we got a lot of experience. Um, although he said we didn't even have a new backfield, but um, a lot of experience between, between us. And um, guys are playing good right now. And, Leaders are, you know, getting the young guys going. The young guys are making plays as well. So we just got to keep keep on going. And how important was it to just jump on them so early and then kind of never – I mean, it was really – it was pretty much never in doubt most of the way. Yeah, I think setting the tone early was, uh, was something that we talked about all week. You want to start fast. Um, and then after that fast start, you want to keep the pedal down, and that's what we did. So uh, good win, fun win, um, and really set the tone. Uh, next question, Eli Carp. Uh, this is for both of you guys. Um, what do you, how do you assess the play of the offensive line today? I think they played uh, amazing tonight. Um, you know, we I think we I saw we had over 300 rushing yards. So, I mean, you can't just do that alone. I mean, we we follow those big guys, and you know, they 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 got us a lot of yards, a lot of touchdowns, and and I mean, we're going to lean on them every game going forward. Um, you know, it starts behind them and. They get all the credit. I echo that. Uh, next. Sorry, thanks. Uh, next question for Jack Lito. Hey, this uh, Jack Lito with NNN. This question is for Peyton. Your first game in a Northwestern uniform, also a new offensive coordinator. How are you able to start just so fast? Because the offense looked so in sync as if they were in their eighth game and not your first game as a Wildcat. Yeah, I think that's a credit to the preparation this off offseason. Um, and even when we weren't able to practice, um, you know, getting those extra throwing sessions and um, that extra time in the meeting room with some of the guys and just talking over um, small nuances in our um, in our scheme. So, um, like I said, I think that comes with, with guys that have played a lot of football and, and having that experience. Um, but, yeah, you know, credit to our preparation and credit to our, our game plan for sure. Uh, next question for Daniel Olinger. Uh, hi, Daniel Olinger here. This question is for Peyton again. Um, a lot of people are going to talk about how well you played tonight. You had a really great game. Is there anything you personally feel like you could have done better? Just any small thing you think you might need to improve on, even if you did have a really great game? Yeah, for sure. Um, there, was, there was guys running wide open tonight that I, that I missed. Um, and some of my progressions just – um, coming back to the sideline. Um, but, you know, that comes with it. I think it was, you know, the first game of the year, kind of shaking out some of those, shaking off some of the rust, um, getting back, getting used to, you know, the speed of the game again. Um, but just going through my progressions, um, you know, trusting what I'm seeing. Um, I, I would say that's the biggest takeaway after after week one. Good time for two final questions for the offense. Uh, next question for... Um, Andrew Golden. Hey, Peyton. Um, Coach Jake stressed the importance of getting the ball in the playmaker's hands. Um, how important was it for? How important was it for you to get the ball in a bunch of people's different hands early on in the game? Yeah, it was huge. Um, you know, I think establishing the run with Zay and and Drake was big, but then in the throw game, um, you know, you saw John Rain, Kyrick, Mod, um, you know, Riley, everybody getting involved. Um, and, and I think when you have um, that many different weapons, so many different guys that have the ability to make plays. Um, you make yourself hard to defend. And uh, that's a credit to those guys on the outside. They, I mean, the entire offense, the way we ran the ball as well. So 
Um, awesome team win, um, and it was a lot of fun. I think that's all we have. So thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. Thanks, guys. Thanks everyone for waiting. Um, here on the defense, we have Jared Pace and Patty Fisher. Like before, we'll start directly with questions. First question we have is for Eli Carr. Hey, this one's for JR. You know, secondary had three picks tonight. You had one and then younger guys get a couple. What is it like to see those younger guys come up with big impact plays, especially after last year when you guys struggled to force turnovers? Yeah, it's exciting, you know. Um, definitely see two of the rooms who playing a lot of football um, at a young age. Uh, definitely for both of them, the first time they're playing meaningful minutes and to make those big plays, you know, it's exciting. Um, you know, that's good uh, for us to see, you know, just going forward for the future. Um, still got a lot of room to grow, but for them to come out fast and make those big plays, you know, that's it's exciting. Next question for Drew Schott. Hey, JR. Um, I have a question. Um, can you kind of take me – so obviously this game special, I mean, first game of the 2020 season, and you guys are back on the field with a huge 40-point win. Can you take me through your interception, uh, kind of what was going through your mind when you made the play as it was a pretty big turning point and kind of helped get some momentum on the offensive side? Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, that play, they had run a – that was a bang and kind of go a uh, corner, and they had run kind of a bang earlier, and B. Joe almost made a play on it. But uh, pregame, uh, Coach Matt came up to me and alerted me. He was like, watch out for this route. This is something I feel like they could do. And so that second time, you know, I just kind of trusted it. And instead of just the bang and the banging corner, I just saw like crazy. And uh, B. Joe was able to protect the inside and just, uh, you know, made it play on the ball. Next question for Ben Chasen. Hey, JR. Um, obviously, great play out of the secondary tonight uh, from you, particularly with an interception. Um, earlier this week, you released the uh, If You Cheer Us, Hear Us video um, after giving fans a lot to cheer for tonight. Uh, do you have anything you want to say in that regard? Mm, no, I was just uh, honestly surprised at the um, reactions and the amount of uh, reach that the video had. Um, so I definitely felt like we had uh, got good responses from that overall. Um, you know, I think a lot of people were moved by the video and kind of understood the purpose and meaning behind it. So. Um, no, nah, I think the video was able to speak for itself for the most part. Next question for Andrew Goldman. Hey, this question is for Patty. Um, something that Blake Gallagher talked about a lot is bringing your own juice. Do you feel like as a defense, y'all brought, brought your own juice tonight? Most definitely, you know, and I think that we came out there and, and executed on all levels um, from the secondary down to the D line and, and we took the ball away, which was huge. You know, uh, we came out and, and, and had fun, you know, and it was evident out there on the sideline and on the field. Next question for Andrew Seligman. Yeah, hi, Patty. Um, just given the way last season went, how important was it to not only start the season with a win, but a dominant win? It was crucial, you know, and that's uh, one thing that we preached all off season. you know, the time that we had together and, and during spring ball before we were uh, unfortunately sent home. Um, you know, we were, pre we were preaching on starting fast, and uh, we came together in the off season and really attacked it um, and made that the forefront and the focus of our. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Next question is for Daniel Olinger. Hey guys, a uh, question for both of you here. Um, you guys performed very well as a defense statistically last year, but it was a big talking point about how you were struggling to force turnovers as much as you wanted to force four turnovers tonight. What do you think just 
Is there anything specifically you did that kind of helped you force those turnovers that you weren't doing as much last year? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, nah, I mean, I think we just continue to put an emphasis on it during camp. Um, you know, obviously come off last year, we realized we didn't make a lot of turnovers. So that was a big, uh, you know, point for us this off season. And so just trying to reemphasize the break on the ball, everybody breaking the ball, you know, reach your cues, get to the ball, try to make punches where you can. So, um, you know, I think we, you know, it was a good start. Uh, still got a long way to go, but I think that mindset is kind of instilled in all of us. Yeah, certainly. We you know the coaches are just there to really harp on it, and we've uh, created more drills during practice to to create more turn turnovers and and really try to find new ways to get the ball back. So you know it's been it's been talked about every practice, all practice. Time for a few more. Uh, next question, Peter Warren. Uh, for both you guys, Fitz gets uh, win number 100 tonight. What do you think that accomplishment says about him as a coach and a leader? Says a lot, you know, um, coming in and getting to 100 wins isn't easy. You know, that's something that not a lot of coaches have accomplished, and, and certainly he's going to have 100 more. JR, if you want to speak on that. I don't know. Sounds good. Uh, next question is for Michael Tuma, and then after that, we'll have one more. Um, so, Jr. Um, on the Maryland side of the ball, um, Jason Jones, the wide receiver uh, for them, has a lot of talent, but he uh, didn't play a single game last year um, because he was hurt. So, what did you guys do to like prep against him since you know he was like it's like since he had such a big year in 2018? Uh, I mean, we watched some of his his. Uh, top plays from that year. Uh, we knew had, we, he had big play making ability. Um, so, you know, we just tried to um, stop all the big plays, stop those from happening. Um, I think we did a good job with that tonight. Uh, he had five receptions for 37 yards. So um, I think we were able to accomplish that. And last question for Drew Schott. Um, this one's for JR and Patty. So obviously there have been kind of some moving pieces on the defense with Travis opting out, Greg, um, Greg Newsom the second not being able to um, play tonight. Um, my question is kind of what is this, uh, what is the development of younger players and their ability to kind of step into game day situations and play well? What does that say about your defense and kind of what expectations do you think that um, that gives you Northwestern going forward for the rest of the season? Yeah, it just goes to show the, uh, the leadership on the defense, you know, um, and not even just um, on, on, for the linebackers, but for the D-line and, and for the DBs as well. We've got leaders in all positions. Um, and, and it goes to show the, uh, the amount of work that everybody puts in and, and how ready and prepared we are and, and, and uh, just, just everything that we put in week in and week out, you know, we're ready to execute and it's the next man up. Yeah, just to echo that, I would say the kind of that next man up uh, mentality is something we preach all offseason, especially coming in with the circumstances that we have with COVID, everything. You never know who has to be ready. Um, you know, it only takes one play. Somebody had to go in. So, you know, I think um, people have, uh, you know, realized that and, you know, studied just in case they were, uh, had the opportunity to go in.